So let's take a look at the Emma Raducanu footwork and hopefully you'll be able to incorporate some of these ideas into your own game. Now this video is courtesy of Court Level Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I put their link in the description below. All right, let's watch this rally and then we'll analyze it. So that was some really smooth movement and hitting. So let's check out what she was doing first. A ball comes right at her on the first one. So she moves around it. Watch how she gets out of the way of this ball. So she is moving to her left to make sure that she's going to get a forehand. But right here, she realizes, uh-oh, this ball's a little shorter than maybe I expected. And she moves in that type of way. Like she moves left, then she moves in. You would think if she recognized right away that it was going to be a shorter ball, that she'd move in at an angle. But even the pros sometimes misjudge a ball. So she moves over. She realizes it's a slower ball than she was expecting. So she does a little half step and a side step to get up to that ball. Now, her body weight right now is leaning forward and moving forward. So when your body weight is moving forward and you're in this neutral stance like she is, it's slightly closed, then what you want to use what is what is called a front foot pivot. And what I mean by that is she's going to take her back foot and swing it around. So watch how she brings her back foot up around and she ends up with her left foot on the left and her right foot on the right. So when you find yourself going forward and you use a closed stance or this neutral stance, then you want to bring this back foot around. Now, you might be asking, and I get this question all the time, Ryan, how do I know if it's a closed stance or an open stance? Well, let me give you a really simple way to judge this. See this line right here? If the ball is below this line, it is generally a closed or neutral stance. If it is above this line at contact, then it is generally an open stance. That is not a hard and fast rule. It's just a guideline. Of course, there are exceptions. Now, obviously, she is playing the ball below that line. And just think of the line as being at your belly button. When you contact below belly button height, generally you're going to use this closed stance, but you don't want to stay in that closed stance. So bring this foot around that makes sure that you can turn your hips. So then she gets another ball. Here's the split step, by the way. The split step timing is to be in the air as your opponent is hitting. That synchronizes your brain and your reaction time with when your feet hit the ground. You actually want to land the split step after your opponent hits. There's about a 0.2 second reaction time with your brain, uh, uh, you know, recognizing a visual uh, event. In fact, we can actually do a timer to represent that. So we'll put a timer down and we'll see how long it takes for her to start moving. Let's see what happens. When, like, when does she land with her feet? There you go. You can see that her feet are hitting the ground around 0.2 seconds. This is perfect. And that's when we see her start to move. Here we see an open stance, and it's a particular open stance called a like a more of a stationary mogul stance. But remember I talked about having an open stance versus a closed stance based on the contact. Here is a contact that is, or a contact point that is higher than belly button height. And what is she in? She's in an open stance. An open stance is your, simply put, your left foot on the left and your right foot on the right. By the way, an open stance has nothing to do with where your toes are pointing. You can see her right foot is pointing this way. Her left foot is pointing this way. People think that an open stance means that your toes are facing forward and that your body is facing forward. That is not an open stance. Open stance is simply left foot on the left, right foot on the right. Doesn't matter if it's a forehand, backhand, left-handed, right-handed. It doesn't matter. That holds true. Left foot on the left right foot on the right. The reason I called it a mogul is because she doesn't stay where she currently is positioned. She actually moves her feet over like this. You can see her feet move over. So this is kind of like she's moguling, you know, <laughs> while skiing down the hill, right? So the open stance, really important for you to be able to hit really effective high contacts uh, or high contact points on ground strokes. Here's the split step timing and you can see that she's in the air. Why was she moving left, by the way? Why is she moving to her left? It's because her, the opponent is on the right or her hitting partner is on the right. So she doesn't want to be in the middle and she definitely doesn't want to be over here. She wants to be over here because then she's bisecting where the hitting partner can hit the ball. So she actually wants to be equidistant to these shots. So she actually wants to be at the green circle. So she's moving over. She then sees the ball go to her backhand. Now, this is really cool. It's like a running mogul. When you are on the run, 
the last step that should hit the ground before you make contact should be the foot that's on the side where you're running. So she is running to her left. So the last foot that hit the gr- hits the ground needs to be her left foot. That is when you are on the run. So she is running. It's a nice deep ball. So she's a little late getting there. Deep balls get to your opponent faster. That's why she's a little late getting there. She didn't do anything wrong. It's just a good deep shot. So there is her left foot hitting the ground last. And she uses what is called a mogul stance. Now, she is, she is like leaving the screen, so we don't actually see her left foot hit the ground, but obviously it does. And she is using that mogul stance where the left foot stays on the left, her right foot stays on the right. That just keeps her body going under her. Now, one thing, I've got a question for you. Her right foot, take a guess which direction it's going to move. Is her right foot going to move toward the center of the court, or is her right foot going to move away from the center of the court. Which direction is her right foot about to move? I'll remind you, she's about to go this way back toward the center. Let's watch her right foot to find out. Ah, it steps back. She actually moves this way slightly, and that's called a drop step. The reason you want to do that is it helps her to get her feet under her and to get her head over her feet and leaning in toward the center of the court. So this is a really common move. She uses a slight drop step to help her recover. She uses a crossover step where she crosses in front with her left foot, allowing her to face forward as she recovers. Usually pros do one crossover step and then start doing a side step, which you can see she does here. She's in the air as the opponent hits the ball. Again, that's the proper timing. Now, this stance that she uses right here is called a closed stance fallout. This is a little bit like the first uh, shot that we saw, this one right here, that front foot pivot, where she's leaning on the front foot and she just brings that foot around. But on this one, she's really stepping across. Remember I talked about height of contact determining closed stance or open stance. Look at this contact. The contact is below belly button height. So she is in a closed stance. She is also not on the dead run. She's, it's nice and easy getting to this ball. She's taking her time. In fact, she slows down to get there. So she closes off the stance. It's easier to close off the stance on a low ball. And then you do not want to stay in the stance. You want to fall out of it. So watch her right foot fall out. When you use a, a closed stance, you need to fall out of it and end up in an open stance. A closed stance should end up in an open. The reason is you need to make sure that you rotate your hips. And locking your hips with a closed stance isn't a good thing. So bring that back foot around. Let's see how she recovers back to the center. She does a crossover. There's a, let's see if she does that little drop step again. Yeah, a little drop step. You can see her left foot makes this slight move under her just a little bit, not much, because she's not really exploding to the center. She does a crossover. She sidesteps. There's her split step. And let's see this last one. Ah, this is an approach shot, and it's what I call a front foot hop. So she's sidestepping to get to this ball. She's leaning on the front foot. Every action has an equal and opposite. So as she swings her right arm forward, her left leg kicks back, just like a slap shot in hockey, ice hockey, or bowling when that foot kicks back. So she ends up having to hop on her left foot. You can see that her right foot kicks back slightly before it comes around. So she's going to have to hop on her left foot, otherwise she would fall over. So you can see she's on her left foot, there's a little bit of a hop, then she's back on her left foot again. Now, the best way to practice these techniques is at home with a Top Spin Pro. You can get a Top Spin Pro using my link in the description. I'm also going to pin it in the first comment. I absolutely love the Top Spin Pro, and I know you will too. And if you're looking for people in your local area to play matches against or practice with, or if you want to find a coach who's close to you who can help you with your game, then use my link in the description and pinned in the first comment, playercourt.com slash two minute tennis. When you use my link to sign up, you get 50% off. Please go out and film yourself rallying and playing matches and look at your footwork and your technique and your strategy. And if you do, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.